Hi, today we are going to start talking about inclined planes and how we deal with them with static problems and dynamic problems. Uh, we will look at how we uh, calculate the parallel force and also we'll look at how uh, we can do an Atwood's problem on an incline. If you haven't seen the Atwood's lab uh, yet, you definitely want to do that before you do this. I'm going to assume that you know some things about the smart pulleys and also uh, you have an understanding of the graphs that we are going to be looking at here today. Uh, when we're talking about an object on an incline, it has a weight that's pointed downward. Uh, this is an air track and I'll explain that a little bit more as we get moving along, but this air track being on an incline also has a normal force pointed out of it. So we have the weight pointed down and that is being countered by a normal force that's pushing up. Those forces are unbalanced. When the object is flat, such as this scale sitting on the table, when, the, when it pushes down on the table, the table pushes back up with an equal and opposite weight. Weight down, normal force up, everything cancels out, balanced forces, zero acceleration. But in this problem, because the weight is down and the normal force is coming out of the plane, then the unbalanced force causes there to be a parallel force down the incline. That parallel force down the incline is going to give us an acceleration because there is an unbalanced force up the incline. So we will see an acceleration down the incline. This is given to us by the parallel force is given to us by knowing the weight times the sine of the inclination of the angle. So the angle underneath here, the angle down in here between the, the uh, table and the inclined plane. I have here a inclinometer that can tell us about the angle that this track is at. There is a hanging mass. All it is is a protractor with a paper clip attached to a string the string is then attached to a weight. As I tip the protractor, the string is going to point straight down because that is the direction that gravity is pulling this hanging weight. And so when I place this onto this particular incline, I get an angle of about 20 degrees uh, of inclination. So this is a 20 degree angle. We will use 20 degrees. The the parallel force then would be calculated by taking the weight of the object times the sine of the angle of in inclination. So the weight times sine theta. Before this lab started, I took this cart, this is the cart, and I placed it on the balance. The measure for this was 200 grams. The 200 gram cart is sitting on a 20 degree angle incline. So what I'd like you to do at this point is stop the video and calculate the parallel force. Mg, 200 grams times 9.8 times the sine of the angle 20 degrees. Make sure you put things into meters, kilograms and seconds. So we're gonna have to convert 200 grams into kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, sine of 20. Calculate now. Okay, you want to make sure that that's record, recorded on a piece of paper. Later on, I'm going to ask you to submit your work to me. So what is going to happen in this particular problem, in this particular scenario, is I'm going to turn on the air track. This is the air supply over here. Uh, it's going to get very loud, so you're not going to be able to hear me when I turn this on, but think of this as a, a vacuum cleaner in reverse. The air is coming in from the... Uh, vents on the side and it's getting blown out through this vacuum hose into the air track. There are tiny pinholes all the way up this track. Those pinholes are creating a, an environment like a, a hockey table, an air hockey table, for this specially designed cart. This cart has an A-frame uh, design, so it sits snugly on here and it uh, uh, as it's sitting on there, there is, again, um, going to be a force down, but because it's sitting on an air pocket, it is going to be nearly frictionless. There is no such thing as perfect frictionless. 
but this is as close as we can get here in the lab. It is going to be very low friction. And so right now I have this attached to a weight up here. We'll talk about that. And there's friction on the track. But when I am when I turn this on, you can see it moves very slowly, but watch what happens when I turn on the air supply. It's just there, you might be able to see from home, it is slowly sliding down the track, very low uh, acceleration. Now let's turn on the air supply. Watch it go down the track. So again, high friction right now, low friction with the air pocket underneath here. So this uh, cart had a parallel force. We can prove that parallel force by measuring a force equal to it in the opposite direction and balancing this off with the air on. And so before this started, I calculated that out and found that the uh, the parallel force divided by 9.8, because I want to get mass, I'm going to have a hanging mass over here, uh, was equal to about 68 grams. You want to calculate the exact value. There is still a little friction in here. So I have this at 68. You're going to have it out to a few more decimal spots. And so, so understand that those decimal spots are significant in your calculation. But in terms of the friction that is still left in here, there is a pulley up here uh, that the little bit of friction in the pulley, as we talked about in the Atwoods machine, uh, a, few, a few tenths of a gram are not going to affect us. Again, this is 68 grams. So that's about, about uh, 675, um, I'm sorry, uh, that is about 0.6 seven five newtons right in that ballpark and and so you have that that uh two-thirds of a newton force countering the the parallel force so mass times gravity that's going up over the pulley and down if we calculate that parallel force correctly then and and, and the rules of parallel force are, are true then this 200 gram object should be countered by 68 grams on this side because again the normal force is taking up some of the uh some of the force so let's see what happens there we go the air is on and it's balanced Again, the air was on and it was completely balanced. The, again, when I take off the mass, there's a little attachment here. When I take that mass off, you can see it sliding down naturally, but when I turn the air on, you saw it speed down very quickly. So that is static. So what you can say there is that the parallel force down the incline was proven correctly, that the calculation of mg sine theta was proven correctly because the force we had on this side was equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and everything was balanced off. So that is that is a static portion of this lap. Now the dynamic portion goes with the Atwoods machine. This is 200 grams. In the last lab we had a 200 gram mass and that 200 gram mass created an acceleration on a 100 gram mass. You calculated that the whole system moved towards the 100 gram uh, towards the 200 gram mass uh, it, because 1.96 newtons is greater than 9.8 newtons this has a force on it of about uh, 0.67 newtons in the parallel force direction this 100 gram mass is 98 hundredths of a newton 98 hundredths is greater so because it's on an incline now all of a sudden the 100 gram mass is able to accelerate a 200 gram mass. Again, this happens because the normal force that is created by the plane is countering some of the weight. So this doesn't have to pull against all the weight. It only has to pull against the parallel force. If this was a flat surface, 
then there would be no reactive force down the incline to this 100 gram weight. And so what you would have is this 100 gram weight accelerating uh, all, all 300 grams, 200 here and 100 here. Now it's still accelerating all 300 grams, but there's also a counter force. So what I'd like you to do is calculate what the acceleration of this system would be if you have a, a force up the incline created by the transfer of this pulley pulling down. So that's uh, 98 hundredths of a newton, 98 hundredths of a newton here, transferred over the pulley, down the string, pulling up the incline, 98 hundred newtons. And then you have your 67 hundredths of a newton pointed in this way, which is the parallel force on this 20 degree angle. 100 grams, 200 grams. Calculate your acceleration. Stop the video right now and calculate that. Okay, so at this point, I've put the 100 gram mass over here on the side. I have the uh, 200 gram cart with its parallel force. You've calculated the acceleration. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to turn on the, uh, the, uh, the graph again uh, on the PASCO system. You can see here that there is a linear speed. The slope of the linear speed is the acceleration. I'm using the same smart pulley at the top that's going to graph the speed of the rope over top of the pulley. Again, the rope we're going to assume is massless. So I'm going to turn on the air supply. Probably aren't going to hear me very well with that on, so I will, I'll explain to you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn on the air supply. I'm going to start recording the graph, and then I am going to release it. We will get a graph of the linear speed going up the incline, the change in the linear speed. We should see the speed getting faster as it's accelerating up the incline. And then I'll turn off the air supply, and we will uh, see if your calculated acceleration is going to be in the same ballpark as the one we measured. Remember, there will be error. We know there will be error. There's some friction in here. Those pulleys aren't completely frictionless. The, the string ha does have a little bit of mass. Um, ultimately, as I'm looking at this, this rope is not exactly parallel. There is a slight increase to the angle of it because of the positioning of this pulley. So all these things are going to play a small effect on it. But we are going to be very close in our measurements. Here we go. So again, we just saw the 100 gram mass pull a 200 gram mass up an incline. So let's see what the slope of this is. So I bring down, I bring down my data selection tool, and I end up here with a value of about uh, 0.73. I'm not super thrilled with that number. Let's try it again and see how it works. Could be a couple different things going on there, but let's try it one more time. I would prefer this number to be about eight tenths. So I think when you do your calculations, uh, you will see that we, we definitely want it up in that range. Okay, so I don't know if you observed it, but there are two pulleys out here. It was rubbing against the edge. I did adjust it so that it was over the second pulley. I'm not sure it was over that in the first run. Um, let's do this measurement here again and see what happens. Pull down the 
data selection tool. There we go. That's much better. 92 hundredths of a uh, 92 hundredths of a meter per second, 0.92, the slope of this line. Use that piece of data against your calculated value for a percent error. Remember, these are extremely small numbers. A difference of a tenth, one tenth of a meter per second squared is 10% error. Keep that in mind. So that is a small value. Remember my statement about a stopwatch in the last video, this happens over a very quick period of time. We are taking here about 20 data sets per second. So every five hundredths of a second, we're getting data. That's spectacular. There's going to be some calculated error in here. Um, and when you include the friction, a difference of a tenth is nothing. Uh, the bigger the difference in the weight, the less friction is going to impact that, as we're going to see. Uh, so in the next scenario, we're going to still use the 200 gram cart. But now I'm going to place uh, I'm going to place on the other side 200 grams. So we have 200 and 200. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and do the calculation on this. I have 200 grams over here. That's a force of 1.96 newtons mg. You have to convert it into meters, kilograms, and seconds. So make sure that you converted the 200 grams into 0.2 kilograms. Uh, we have our cart, which is still 20 degree angle, 67 hundredths of a Newton of force here. So you have 1.96 Newtons over there. You have 67 hundredths of a Newton here. Take the difference, divide by the masses, the sum of the masses, which is 0.4 kilograms, get a value. Pause, make sure you get that. Okay, and now we're going to calculate it. You can see now that heavier that heavier weight over there by that cause of that 200 gram mass, I have to actually hold on to this cart. It's not, the friction's not gonna hold it in place anymore. So now I have to be maneuvering a number of things with my hands. So just let me start the air supply, start, start the graph, and then uh, uh, I will explain what you see at the end. Okay, so let's check out the uh, graph we get here. So I'm pulling down the, the uh, selection tool again, and we are right in this zone right here. This is where the acceleration occurred. Then the pulley reaches and there it stops, it spins, the car comes back down. There's a lot of things that happen there to the wheel. We're only looking at that first range, and you are seeing that value is about 3.02. Um, I'm gonna do it one more time because I like to do things the second time just to see if we get a similar value. And um, again, I'm pulling this back. We will turn on the air supply. This graph here looks even better. There's a, even more linear than before. I think without even uh, without even putting the tool on there, I'm going to be happy with the result. Uh, we are still at about uh, 3.05, 3.02. So we're we're okay. Let's use that number versus your acceleration that you calculated. There is friction. There's friction in the the little bit of friction, small amount in the track, small amount in the pulleys, keep that in mind. Please do the calculations. Take note of the fact that in this lab, we looked at the, the parallel force and we also were able to see and calculate the accelerations up the incline based on a force pulling it up the incline. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.